Now we're going to go ahead and start shaping the uh, meat. Hi y'all, welcome back to my episode on, on bishops. I thought that uh, that little failure of the uh, screw chuck might, might get y'all's interest. We'll talk about that a little bit more uh, a little later in, in the video. I uh, really appreciate all the views I've been getting on the first first couple of episodes. I uh, want to respond to a couple of comments or, or mention them because uh, I appreciate y'all's uh, the participation of all the subscribers. Terry Ellis uh, suggested making some sanding sticks by using some adhesive on some thin strips of wood and gluing on sandpaper. I think that's an uh, excellent idea, Terry. Uh, y'all might want to consider that. Uh, Al Fisher uh, questioned the, the, the benefits of cutting the Shape, doing the final shaping on the rooks uh, after you cut the crenellation, and we're going to see we're going to, we've got the same issue in the bishop uh, uh, episode where I cut the slot on the miter before I turn it, and, and I got that tip from Mike Darlow's book. He suggests that makes it easier to cut, and I tried it both ways, and I found that trying to cut on the finished piece, I had a tendency with a saw to, when I was using a hand saw to cause some type of skips or uh, or uh, a tear out, so that didn't work well for me. So I like cutting the slots uh, in advance. Um, Don Bell asked if I'm going to have uh, finished, uh, completed plans for this project. No, you're just going to have to watch all the videos and uh, and come up with your own plans, like I did. R research, find find a, a set of plans you like, a picture, and then to scale it to the size you you want, and make modifications uh, as you want. Let me show you a picture of the original design from the set that I, I copied as shown here. Okay, here's a picture. On, on the right you'll see the, uh, not, not to scale, but the original design of the, the bishop that I copied off the internet. And into the, in the middle you'll see the scale drawing that I came up with for the storyboard, which with a little more traditional shape. And then, and then of course, here's the, 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 the final uh, sample of the final, final bishop. I felt like the ball top looked too much like the pond, so I made mine a little more traditional. Uh, but I used a, a vertical miter slot because I felt it looked a little more like a traditional miter hat as shown in these, these pictures. Not that that's real relevant because an awful lot of uh, chess men have been made with uh, uh, diagonal slots in it, so there, obviously that works, that works too. I felt like that was a little harder to cut than the uh, horizontal. Uh, slot down the middle as I'll show you on how I do that on a bandsaw in, in just, a, just a moment. Uh, Mike Darlow uh, showed in his, his book, he actually made a little wooden jig that fit in a banjo like a tool rest, uh, a flat surface on top of a, a wooden post that fit inside the, the banjo and he used that to cut slots both on the rooks and the bishops and if you wanted a, an angle slot then you make a little angled uh, table. Uh, and that's something worth trying if uh, you know if you want if you want to go that go that route. So let's get, let's move on to the uh, move on to the bandsaw. Okay, I marked a vertical slot all the way around the block, and I'm going to cut this slot on the bandsaw instead of using the the table saw. <laughs> cut the slot on the bandsaw for the uh, miter. Uh, my suggestion is once you figure out your routine, do all those pieces in those particular steps. In other words, cut all your slots, cut all your pieces of block uh, to one size for at least one piece, cut the slots in this case, um, drill the holes, do all those at one time because I think you'll get better results. Just Think about the very first one you do though, make sure you get the sequence right. For example, here you don't cut uh, slots for the rook <laughs> on the wrong end. They should have been cut on this end. So, think about your process and be careful I guess is all I'm saying. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and rough this out. Now, according to the storyboard, the width of this is 27 millimeter, which I know falls between this thickness and this thickness. I'll just go ahead and spot check it. 
and I'm at 28, so I'm just about there. All I got to do is clean that up a little bit. Uh, the width of the, the thick part is going to be half halfway. Uh, this is cut uh, 10 millimeter deep. We're going to go ahead. Uh, this the widest part on the miter head is 14 millimeter. This stubby Morse taper is 17. So when I get real close to this, I'm going to have to stop and and do the rest of the uh, sizing uh, down just a little bit. Although I can go ahead and size it actually right here, which I think is what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and mark that critical dimension. There's the bottom of that detail. There's the center point. There's the thickest part. So, for the thickest part, thickest part, I'm going to go ahead and Bring this down to about fourteen millimeter. And that's fifteen millimeter, so that's that's good. And then we're gonna size this this part to 10 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down a little bit lower than this. First thing I'm going to do, go ahead and get this square and bring it down about one millimeter. That's good. Now I'm going to take that thin parting tool and bring it right up to that edge go down about a, about a sixteenth of a mil, uh, about one millimeter now that I've got my dimension sized I can go ahead and waste a little, little more wood beating parting tool it might be a little easier to get that size a little closer. A little bit away from the edge. Okay. I'm going to take a moment to sharpen my skew. Just take a diamond hole and I put it under under my arm like this. Give it a few circular marks. Six hundred grit. Okay, so now I can bring this in a little bit closer. And I know it's going to meet there, so I'm going to go down about this, touch it. Now we're going to go ahead and start shaping the uh, yep. Okay, that was exciting for my next trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a drop of uh, CA glue in here, thick, or rather medium, a couple of drops. Just a little bit of accelerator on the screw and now we're just going to gotta take this off
Okay, we're just going to I have to be a little more gentle, lighter cuts on the end. I'm going to go back to using the wooden soft touch so I can go ahead and cut this away if I have to without any problem. Let's talk briefly about that that failure of that that screw chuck. The the, the root cause for that is um, after I turned the uh, the rooks, I started making the holes a little bit deeper in the bottom, anticipating the need for for some additional weight, uh, uh, lead pennies, uh, what have you. And and I really didn't make any adjustments on the screw chuck. And what happened was by by uh, increasing that depth. Uh, right here, I shortened the amount of hole on the on the two inch screw, and uh, so that quick fix that I used worked just fine with uh, for that one time uh, putting a little CA glue. But ultimately, the the best solution I I replaced the the shorter screw with one about a quarter of an inch longer, and that solved that that problem going forward. I'm going to switch to a. Uh, quarter inch detail gouge and I'm just going to is not snug enough. I'm just going to back this away and carefully turn this away. that miter shaped all we got to do is clean up this damage a little bit and clean that up I'm back to the skew to get this down here like that Light beat cut, and the two planes meet. Okay, now we're going to come down to that plane with this skew. Get rid of that little bit of a con convex shape we have. How close they look. Okay, I think they're looking, looking pretty close. Nothing but sanding left. Okay, I've sanded this to uh, 600, and I'm going to take a little of this uh, U Butte Triple E Ultra Shine and just rub it on pretty good, generously. And it's an abrasive compound that should uh, take that 600 up to at least uh, close to a thousand. strip of paper towel and then at high speed I rev this up to 600, 1000, 2500, get it up to a pretty good speed and just, in effect I'm buffing this. Get my fingernail down that groove a little bit. 
keep it moving, keep it moving. Okay, and now I'm ready to go ahead and buff this up on the lathe using a piece of carnauba wax. I can see that wax getting laid on there. Get a fresh piece of uh, kitchen uh, paper pe towel, and now I'm just going to wax this in at a high speed with some pressure so it'll be hot and melt into the wood. And it is quite hot. from both sides, top and bottom. And we're ready to take that off and put a weight on it and put a felt on it. It's got a nice sheen to it. Uh, traditionally, uh, this is how chess pieces were uh, taken care of in the past. You'd think you'd put lacquer on it, except lacquer uh, sometimes tends, tends to dull some of the detail. Get just a little bit of that wax out of there. Okay. And uh, the key is finishing it to a very fine, fine grit and then uh, that U butte triple E to really polish it and then add that uh, add that wax wax finish. These are going to be kept in a box and they they should uh, stay shiny for a good long while. In the next episode, when I deal with the queens, we'll I'll show you uh, the coloring technique we use to to finish the dark the dye the dark pieces.